G'day everyone. In the background behind me here, you'll see Victoria's second highest mountain. That is Mount Feathertop and it stands at 1,922 metres above sea level. Now there's still a lot of snow up there and the weather's starting to warm up. How is all that snow melt going to affect the flow in the rivers? Rightio, every year on social media in the community I hear people talking about the snow melt. We've still got all that snow to melt yet, all that snow's got to come down the river yet, the river's going to flood once all that snow melts. But how much of an effect does the melting snow in the springtime really have on our waterways? Now this year we've just had a bumper snow season. I think at the moment Falls Creek and Mount Hotham are still reporting around about 160 centimetres of snow across their ski runs. That's this much snow, that's a lot of snow. People get this misconception that there's 165 centimetres of snow all across the mountains, right across from the alpine areas up. Now here in Victoria, the alpine area is considered anything above 1,200 metres above sea level. So over here, where we've got Mount Feathertop, from 1,200 metres to 1,922 metres is all classed as alpine. Now people get this misconception, based on the snow report, that there's 165 centimetres right across that whole area and it's all going to melt. The actual fact is the snow melt has very little effect on the water flow. Well, it has a big effect, but not in the way that so many people seem to think it's going to have an effect. Basically, all it's going to do is maintain a high, cold flow of water throughout the spring months and keep the river looking really, really healthy. Right here, I am on the Ovens River. The Ovens River drains Mount Hotham, Mount Feathertop, the second highest part of the mountains. Over the, the valley, we've got Mount Bogong at 1,986 metres, and that's drained by the Middle Middle River and the Kiva River. So these rivers, the Middle, the Kiva, the Ovens, they're all snow fed during the spring months. Now, the actual snow melt, the actual spring thaw. In other parts of the world, the spring thaw can create all kinds of problems because they, those parts of the world are much, much colder. So the snow falls and it stays frozen. They might get 10 centimetres of snow. That, that 10 centimetres stays there. Two weeks later, they might get another 20 centimetres. That stays there, now they've got 30 centimetres, and so on. Here in Australia, when that happens, we might get 10 centimetres. In two weeks' time, most of that 10 centimetres has already melted. Then we get another 20 centimetres. Then before we get the next lot, a lot of that's melted as well, because it's so much warmer. Now, at the moment, if you look over here at Mount Bogong, you can see that right up near the top of the mountain, there's already a lot of rocks showing. That snow's already melted. That's not gonna have an effect on the rivers, that's already gone. Basically, when the snow falls, say it falls down hypothetically to 1,200 metres above sea level, pretty soon those lower levels start melting. Around that 1,200, 1,300 metres is sort of seasonal snow. It melts, lasts for a couple of weeks, then it melts, then you get a little bit more, then it melts. It only stays for the entire winter up in the higher mountains. Now, in the springtime when it starts thawing out, like now, a lot of it thaws, it thaws out at different speeds and a lot of it's already gone. The north faces of the mountains, such as this one here, they melt the first. So if you look at Mount Bogong there now, you can see there's a lot of rocks showing. But if you were to look on the other side of the mountain, it'd still be pure white, like the middle of winter, because that gets the afternoon shade. So it melts first from the north side, not the south side. Then it melts more from the more exposed ridges and the peaks. Then the wind blows a lot of the snow in the winter when it's dry and blows it down into gullies. So you get a lot more snow in the gullies. Now when it melts, it only melts on the top and a little bit underneath when the water starts flowing and creating little snow caves. The only way that all the snow that's in the mountains will have any sort of bad effect on our rivers is if we've got a really sudden hot day early in the season, like say August. Say, say we've got like a 35 degree day in August when there's still a fair covering of snow, that would have an impact, but it's not going to happen. Or widespread rain. If we've got widespread rain, heavy rain, like five or six inches of rain, across the snow-capped mountains, that will have disastrous effects. Rain in the winter on the snow can cause a lot of problems. But the actual spring thaw, like right now, which is already well and truly underway, a lot of it's already gone, that, that, all that does is maintain a nice, high, clear flow of water into the snow-fed rivers. Right now, a lot of the non-snow-fed streams, the more rural streams and low-lying rivers and creeks, are really struggling for water. They don't have a lot of water. They're lower than they should be for this time of the year. Whereas the rivers such as the Ovens, the Kiva and the Mitter, they're flowing well, they're flowing hard, they're flowing cold, thanks to that snow. They're snow-fed. In other parts of the world, some parts of, of America, of the USA, some of the European countries, it's a different story. They don't have as much 
as much time between their changes of their season. They'll go from being constantly frozen, everything's frozen, two weeks later they're wearing t-shirts, everything's melting at once. That causes problems. But we don't have that here. Our snow actually melts in the winter, not long after it falls. So you, for those people out there thinking that the snow melt is going to send a lot of water down the streams and it's going to make it flood, that's not. It's just going to maintain a nice healthy flow until it's all gone. Even now if we've got a deluge, you know, 80% of the snow that was up there four weeks ago is gone. The snow that's left is all up on top of the mountains. When the ski resorts report that they've got 165 centimetres, they're reporting on their ski runs. A lot of that farm that's pushed up, it's pushed up from outside and on top. They've got snow making on top of that. If you were to go to False Creek now, you'll probably find there's bare patches of ground poking around. There's probably five, 10 centimetres in places and there might be three metres in other places. That's not a constant thing. You get a shady bit, there's heaps. You get a sunny side, there's not much. And you get a wind blowing ridge and there's none. So if we had that constant cover of 160 centimetres, and a lot of rain, that would cause problems, but I've lived on the Ovens River for 43 years and I've never seen the spring thaw create issues with flooding or raised water levels. It's just maintained a decent flow throughout the spring.